In this uh, video, we'll understand about flow shop scheduling. Uh, that is, uh, how do you sequence the jobs? And then how do you find the ideal time in the machines, what is being used? Here we are going to focus on N jobs where N is larger than one job and two machines. So we will be understanding how do we solve this. The question is, in a factory, there are six jobs to perform, each of which should go through two machines, A and B, in the order A, B. Means all the jobs will be first processed in machine A and then it will move on to machine B. That is the sequence. That is the machine sequence. The processing time in hours for the jobs are given below. So here they give us uh, job one to job six and uh, in each of the machine, machine A and machine B, how much time in hours it is going to take for each of the job to get processed. Uh, you are required to determine the sequence for performing the jobs that would minimize the total elapsed time capital T. And we also need to find out what is the value of capital T. Apart from this, we'll also understand in the same uh, problem, how do we determine the idle time for each machine also. Now let us uh, go to the solution. Here uh, we'll be using what is called as a Johnson's algorithm or Johnson's rule. Let us see what it is. Johnson's rule says if the shortest time is for the first machine, do that job first. And if the shortest time is for the second machine, do that job last. Sometimes it may so happen that the processing time may be same in uh, machine one and machine two, in which case we will choose that job for which the difference in the processing time is large between the machines and enter in that location, depending on in a specific location, whether it is to start with or to end with, depending on which machine it occurs, right? So based on this, let us first do the job sequencing. We may notice among all this processing time, the least processing time is one and it is occurring in the first machine, that is machine A. So the corresponding job, that is job one, needs to be processed first. So we will write here in the job sequence, job one first. So now actually this is done. I will just put it put a line over there. That means the job one is already entered here. Now, among the balance processing hours, the least processing hour is two, but it, there is a tie. You may notice that it is occurring in job four also. It is occurring in job five also. So there is a tie. In this case, in this case what we have to do is we will find out the difference between these two. Means five and two, the difference is three. Six and two, the difference is four. We'll be choosing the largest difference that is four and uh, that is uh, in job five actually so and since this two is occurring in machine two we will be uh, processing job five in the last so i will write job five here so that is done now let me put a line there and again, the next least processing is, of course, job four, job four, and that least processing time is up, okay, appearing in machine B. So I will do job four before job five. So let us put a line over there also. Now the next least processing time is three, and it is occurring in three places here, here, and also here. Let us choose first this, uh, since here it is only once it is occurring, I will choose this three first. And since it is occurring in machine B, this job three needs to be done in the end. That means prior to job four. So let me strike that also. Right. Now, uh, among these two, which one we have to choose? Let us find the difference again. The difference between 6 and 3 is 3. Difference between 3 and 10 is 7. 7 is the largest. That means I will first enter this job 6. And since this 3 is occurring in machine A, I need to write it in the beginning job 6, which means next to job 1, I will be executing 
job six. So let us strike that job six again now. Now what is left is only job two that will be written in the blank space like this. So the sequence is now job one, job six, job two, job three, job five and job four and job five. Now, how do we proceed with finding the idle time and elapsed, uh, total elapsed time? We'll do like this. We'll create a table like this wherein the same sequence is already written here. Job one, job six, job two, job three, job four, job five. It is written here. Now, uh, in machine A, what is the in time? Whenever any job starts, that time the in time is considered to be zero. And job one, machine A, let us go to machine A, job one. First, let me remove this, uh, what do you call? These lines. Yeah. So now, uh, machine A, job one. Machine A, job one, it is going to take one hour. So I will add zero plus one. So the out time for that is one only. I'll write one here. So job six can be started at first hour, at the end of one hour. And the job six is going to take three hours in machine A. So I will have to add one plus three, it becomes four. So I will have to start at the end of fourth hour job two, I will write here four. And the job two is going to take in machine A three hours. So four plus three, it becomes seven. Let me write seven here. Job three is going to take eight hours in machine A. So I need to add eight here, so it becomes 15. I will write 15 here and job four is going to take in machine A five hours. So I will add five hours here, 15 plus five, it becomes 20. Let me write 20 here. Job five is going to take six hours in machine A. So I will add six and it will become 26 here. After completion of job one in machine A, it can get processed in machine B. That means in machine B, it will start at end of first hour and for machine B, job one, how much time? Let us check that. Machine B, job one, it is going to take uh, job one, machine B, five hours. So I will be adding five, one plus five, it becomes six. And even though this job six is getting ended at job, uh, so at fourth hour, but it cannot start because still it is, machine is under use because job one is getting executed. So I need to write this six here as the end time for job six. Job six, machine B, how much processing time? Job six, machine B, it is 10 hours. So let me add 10 and write here 16. Again, here the same logic, even though it is getting ended at seventh hour, it cannot start because it is machine is under use and because job six is getting executed. So I need to write 16 here. Now job two in machine B, how much time it is taking? Job two machine B. Job two machine B is going to take six hours. Let me add six here. It becomes 22 here. Same logic, 15 is, it is getting, at the end of 15th hour, this is over, but it can start only at 22nd hour. Job three in machine B. Job three in machine B is three hours. So let me add three to get 25. Again, same logic, I need to write 25 only here. Uh, job four, it is going to take two hours. Let me add two, so it becomes 27. Same logic, again, I have to write 27 only. Now, job five in machine B, job five in machine B is taking two hours. Let me write two here. I mean, two to be added, that means it becomes 29. So this particular number, whatever we wrote in the end of machine B, that is your total elapsed time. So total elapsed time is 29 hours. Now idle time can be found like this. Let me add the uh, total here.
if we add this 1 plus 3 4 4 plus 8 to 12 12 plus 5 17 17 plus uh, 6 23 23 plus 3 26 for machine a total time taken required is 26 hours for machine b 5 plus 6 11 11 plus 3 14 14 plus 6 16 16 plus 2 18 18 plus 10 28 so from this itself we can identify the idle time for machine a and machine b let me write that idle time in machine a is the total elapsed time minus the time required in machine a it is 26 let me subtract that to 26 so you get idle time as three hours same way idle time in machine b will be total elapsed time minus the time required in machine b which is 28 so let me write 28 to get one hour now from where this 3 and 1 came that can be identified here also uh, for example we may notice that machine a starts at zeroth time and it is continuously running 0 to 1 1 to 4 4 to 7 7 to 15 15 to 20 20 to 26 but the machine has to be idle till this job is done in machine b that is 29 so three hours it will be idle only that is why it is three which is actually 29 minus 26 here again it is three only now in idle time in machine b if you look into this we may notice it started after one hour only because it is machine is occupied i mean the job is occupied in machine a and machine b that time it doesn't have any job so the first one hour is what it is so it is one over there so here we got that three, which is tallying here. Here we got that one, which is tallying here. Here there is no idle time. Similarly, here there is no idle time. So that is how we do the sequencing and we also find the idle time using this Johnson's algorithm for uh, flow shop, for this uh, flow shop scheduling, whenever we have N jobs and two machines.